Uh, today we tried to do top 10 fails with the Vortex, but there were just too many. So it's actually top 15 Vortex fails. All the mistakes that we've made in the past, uh, you can learn from our mistakes so you don't have to experience them yourself. All right, so number one, nothing does this quite like this. Yeah, the mistake here is not putting these Vortex pumps on the back of your tank, especially if you paint it black because they just disappear. Okay, there's no other option that has no cords in the tank visible on the inside or outside and the pumps are virtually uh, invisible. So if you have the ability to, uh, like we did in the uh, 60 cubes in my office, mm -hmm. we put a couple of them on the top and a couple on the bottom and we can create different flow patterns. Uh, these are bare bottom tanks in this case, mm -hmm. but you can really do it with a lot of different options. So if you have the option to put these things on the back, is the cleanest looking tank that you'll probably ever set up. All right, so you've heard us talk about this before, but you should really just do this right up front. Yeah, so don't overlook or don't make the mistake of not picking up an extra head for your Vortec pump. It, as soon as you get your Vortec pump, just add one of those to the cart. That small little investment will save you a ton in maintenance and downtime, like seconds. All right, so the nature of these things too, for me, is they just wear out eventually, mm. right? but largely they wear out because of poor maintenance. Yep. Uh, you know, like you just, this is a hard environment. Salt water, there's coralline algae growing on it. There's all kinds of, you know, gunk building up. There's calcium uh, carbonate building up on it. And it just kind of wears them down like any old pump that it does. But in this case, this is the easiest to clean pump there is because all I need to do is reach in, grab it, throw this thing in some uh, citric acid, put a new one in and just let it do its work overnight. Uh, because it's so easy, anyone would do that once a month. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy another one of these eventually, but if I buy it now, I'll probably never buy one again, and my tank will have the flow I'm looking for because it's so easy to clean and maintenance and swap them out. All right, so number three, you may have skipped this step, but you shouldn't. Yeah, and you learned this one specifically on the one, on your 360. Use the cable ties and the cord management uh, options that come with your Vortec pump. Not only makes it clean, but it makes it safe so that the pump doesn't fall all the way to the ground. Specifically in the case of the MP60 that has these little tabs that holds the dry side on the, helps hold it on the side of the tank so it doesn't fall. Yeah, these aren't cheap, so you don't want it to fill, fall and hit the ground and uh, crack, right? So uh, yeah, these little taps uh, hook in and just hold it up, or you can just actually rest it right on the bottom mm -hmm. of it as well. Uh, but these guys actually will uh, stick to the glass too, and you zip tighter on the cord. And the big thing here is it will look like it's actually holding on, but what happens when I pull this off to go clean it? then the thing will fall. So it won't if you uh, secure it. One little other tip, just while I got your attention. Uh, these things are white. There's white sticky on the mm. back of this. And uh, so I think it's called VBR tape. Yeah. Uh, you can find this kind of stuff at Home Depot. Uh, if you want, and if it's stuck to the side of your tank somewhere, you can actually see the white. You can actually just kind of roll it off with your fingers and then apply some uh, double-sided like VBR tape from uh, 3M. Now it's clear and you won't be able to see it at all. All right, so you could do this if you want, but make sure you're doing it with the goal in mind. Yeah, so the mistake here is running them at 100% if you expect or need absolute zero silence. Most pumps out there at 100% max flow will have some sort of noise. These do too. Yeah, so in my own house, uh, I find at 100% they're barely audible, but I'm mm. really picky about this thing. <laughs> so if I turn it back to 80%, dead silent. So yeah. if you really, really need that extra 20%, like it's gonna make or break your tank, uh, so be it. But this is pretty common with a lot of the different DC pumps out there. So uh, if you crank it all the way, the limits, uh, it may make a little bit of noise, but if you crank it just slightly back, it may solve that as well. Number five, you wanna go through a wall. You want to <laughs> uh, like uh, do an advanced install and you just can't fit the huge box. What are you gonna do? Yeah, so do not overlook that you can disassemble this driver here. It comes apart, the clip for the from the cable of the pump to the driver is just a quick snap in, snap out. And now you've gone from this big giant thing to just about an inch. Yeah, so like for instance, in my own tank, uh, I have a tank on one side of the wall and the sump's on the other side of the wall. I don't wanna drill a hole as big as this to <laughs> send it through. So there's three screws on the back and a little clip, and then all of a sudden I can send basically just the cord through a one inch hole, send it through, and uh, it's much, much easier. So uh, know that you can take it apart and just pull off a little clip and route the wire much easier.
Number six, I uh, used this for the first time not that long ago. Yeah, so don't overlook the use of uh, feed mode inside of Mobius. The, uh, when your pumps are all connected together or on the same Mobius account, all you have to do is walk in and push feed mode uh, and it turns them down for about 10 minutes. Yeah, so for me, uh, I like uh, generally don't use feed mode, but in my bare bottom tank, I got pretty heavy flow. And, so, <laughs> and it's a huge tank, so one little cube of food actually gets lost in there pretty quick. If I just hit the feed mode on my phone mm -hmm. and uh, drop the uh, cube in or dissolve cube, it, it just kind of floats down and you can see all the fish gather and eat it all up really easy. So, uh, you know, consider using that feed mode. Uh, if you're seeing a lot of waste in your tank, you can eliminate it. All right, number seven, even though I can swap it out and just uh, throw it in the citric acid overnight once in a while, Sometimes there's value in actually doing a little bit more than that. Yeah, so maybe once a quarter or something, do not overlook or don't make the mistake uh, that you can deep clean these pumps. They disassemble more than just the guard off of the top. You can actually break it all the way down and uh, sometimes you'll find some dirty material inside of there. Yeah, so uh, specifically, you know, calcium carbonate tends mm -hmm. to build up in uh, reef equipment. So, uh, you know, if you take it uh, added effort, uh, even maybe twice a year, just to disassemble it. And when you soak it, take the three seconds to disassemble it. When you soak it, you'll get even better results. Number eight, measure how thick your glass is. Yeah, the mistake is not using the spacers for the proper thickness of your glass. They're included. They have the size of the glass on the sticker in there. It'll tell you which one to use. So make sure you have the right spacers. Not only does the rubber part of the spacer make so that it actually holds, sticks to the glass a little easier, but it's that magnetic coupling to make sure that the wet side holds firmly to the dry side. Yeah, so just take out a ruler and uh, measure uh, how thick your glass is because you may have not done that before and use the correct spacer. All right, so number nine is a favor to uh, the customer service staff here at BRS. Uh, I think we should share this one. Yeah, the mistake that we hear a lot is we get a phone call that says, I'm missing the wall wart part of my power cord. Where is it? Well, not only did Ecotech put a sticker in there that says power supply underneath, we just want to tell you that if you lift up the bottom, the power cord's probably under there. So it's the uh, nature of uh, trying to fit it all in a tight box. But <laughs> yes, the power cord is in there. It's underneath the plastic. All right, so number 10, something really cool has happened the last couple of years. Yeah, so if you, if you make the mistake of thinking that you're locked into the flow that this generates, it only goes one side, it's only like a wider pattern, uh, you're actually wrong. There's parts out there for you. Yeah, so uh, you know what? It's ingenious people and all the 3D uh, printers <laughs> and stuff out there. So uh, Neat Aquatics, I think there's another brand out mm -hmm. there that makes these things. Uh, but uh, you know what? It just locks on. And now uh, this one is a little bit more safe for your fish and uh, other yeah. things in there. And also it's a, a little bit less profile, lower profile this way and uh, changes the flow pattern. There's a couple so, options, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of different options out there. I think you're gonna see this kind of world expand because with the world of 3D printing, just so easy to uh, you know create brand new uh, uh, flow patterns. We're gonna work on actually demonstrating what the flow patterns look like in, in the future. So give a, a little better uh, idea of how to utilize it. But yeah, so you can use this and uh, get a totally different uh, flow out of it, aftermarket stuff. Maybe Ecotech will even actually start supplying some uh, of their own versions of this type of thing. All right, number 11 here. If it's making noise, you should solve it. Yeah, don't, don't make the mistake of just letting it vibrate or letting it make noise when it's connected to your glass. Really, sometimes all it takes is just moving that wet side inside the uh, aquarium until it lines up just right on the dry side and all of that noise disappears. I also find that just letting it run for a few days sometimes mm -hmm. just kind of jiggles on its own in the right place. So uh, try to find like the access, you know, move it back and forth, up and down, and figure out right where so it's totally perfectly lined up. Note that sometimes when you're looking through the glass, it actually distorts it in a way that it, it may not actually look perfectly lined up, even though it is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's making some noise, specifically at uh, you know that 80% range, you can solve that. Number 12. This is the most commonly messed up step of the whole thing. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do it someday in the future, but it's usually after you had the problem. Yeah, the mistake, and we've made this mistake a couple of times, is not having these on a battery backup from day one. The battery backup, and we did some battery backup testing for different, U, different UPSs and other uh, battery backups. This one specifically being DC battery backup, changes from hours to days of protection. Okay, so most people will have a power outage 
most people, it won't be more than a matter of hours. You're not mm -hmm. usually looking unless you're, uh, you know, getting hurt, hit by like really severe weather uh, or in an area where you just lose power all the time, mm -hmm. in which case a generator is probably a better option. But for most people, you're probably losing out power for eight hours every few years or so. Uh, it's inevitable for a lot of people. It's just going to happen. So know that and solve it ahead of time. Don't wait until after you've lost some of the animals you're caring for. Just get the battery back up. It's pretty inexpensive in relation to the cost of the pump. And now the moment that the power goes out, the flow stays on. And really flow and keeping oxygen and gas exchange is really the only important thing that's gonna need to happen during a power outage for that first eight hours. All right, so number 13, the most direct path isn't always the best. Yeah, so the mistake here is you have this sleek, nice looking pump the cord should be the same too. So there is there's a couple different ways to hide that cord or help hide the cord. Follow the water line, follow the stand. Yeah, so the temptation sometimes is just to have it shoot all the way out and you got this mm -hmm. big cord that's going across the side of the tank. Uh, however, you know, a lot of the times what you're actually enjoying the tank is from the front. And I don't want to see that cord visually through the mm -hmm. side of the glass. And so if you send the cord up to that water line, then over, uh, you often won't see it. As well as, you know, obviously shooting down. Up is my preferred method because it's going to hold on to that cord again when we remove mm -hmm. uh, the pumps. But uh, if you just really, really want to run it along the bottom, you can do that as well. And just note that when you put these clips in, if it did fall for some reason, it would only fall an inch or so. All right, this one is very specific to the bare bottom reefers of the world and maybe even some of the crushed coral reefers of the world. Yeah, so the mistake is not putting these on the bottom versus a different pump that has a cord inside the tank where you have to see that cord all the way through the, the height of the tank. This one, no cord, but it's right down there at the bottom. Yeah, I don't think I would use anything else. If I'm gonna put, I mean, one of my greatest uh, joys of the bare bottom is actually that I can keep it clean mm. by having pumps on the very bottom. It just flushes it off. Uh, and so uh, it actually creates a whole different flow pattern that I haven't seen when you just kind of put them on the sides or the upper tiers of the tank. When you start, you know, put it in different areas, you get a totally different uh, effect, which is beneficial. It's turbulent flow. It's coming from different areas, it's keeping the tank clean. It's keeping the bottom suspended. All the food uh, gets, goes down, the overflow gets captured by either your fleece or your filter socks. It just works really well. However, uh, if you do it with a normal pump, yeah, those dangly cords yeah. going all the way down and they're the bottom. never straight either yeah it, they're just really ugly so in this case this is one of the only options i think that looks clean and neat in a bare bottom or crushed coral tank where the crushed coral will stay in place with heavy flow uh, so just consider this if you want flow down at the bottom of the tank all right number 15 maybe the most overlooked uh, thing from ecotech most people haven't used these, and it applies to actually the whole world. Other than uh, <laughs> Ecotech's products, uh, uh, you should really, really consider these. Yeah, the mistake is thinking that you're only stuck to the, the sticky tape that comes to put your driver on the wall, uh, and also thinking that you, all you have to do for the power brick or power supply is lay it on the ground. There's actually really cost-effective options from Ecotech to clean up both of those, especially anything else with the power brick. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this guy right here will slide right inside of this, and it's a nice, neat, easy way to hold it in place, and if you ever want to remove it, Really easy. I'm not mm -hmm. taking off the Velcro, and it's you know the, the Velcro. What happens is, if there's any tug on the cord at all, it's wonky. You know, <laughs> yeah. and then if you got four of them right next to each other, they're all kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. uh, this way, they're all neat and nice, and uh, you know, uh, like like just parallel to each other, and it just looks like a really clean install. So if you are uh, you know, a little OCD, uh, sometimes I'm OCD, sometimes I'm not. I don't know, but this is one of those areas where I am. But this is the thing I love the most. It's actually these uh, uh, power supply mounts. And so in this case, uh, you just Velcro this thing right onto the uh, power supply, mm -hmm. and it screws in. So you can remove them really easy. Yeah but they're secured to the wall. And this is another area where neat and clean is equal safe, Yes. right? Uh, and it actually works on any power supply because there isn't a, it's just a length on how far you want to mm -hmm. use it. It doesn't have a, an outside on it. Yeah. And the way you do this, by the way, because you want to make it really nice and clean is there's two little stickers on it. So go ahead and put it on your power supply, peel off the stickers, and then push it to wherever you want it. Then take the power supply out, 
and it sticks and you can just screw it in. So it's like a Perfect. really, really easy way to make sure it's super clean and neat. Consider these for any application. I use them all over the place and uh, I don't know, probably one of the most overlooked items out there in reefing. All right, so if there's only one thing you hear today, let it be this. Yeah, for me, and it's because we experienced a catastrophic failure, because we didn't do this, get the battery back up for these pumps. It will potentially save a lot or all of your fish. Yeah, don't wait until you killed something. The whole purpose is to prevent that from happening. So, uh, like, go run to the phone and pick it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, for me, I got two of them just based on my own personal experience recently. Mm. They worked out really, really, really well. Uh, one is putting them in the back of my peninsula worked really well. I have no tank, uh, visible pumps in the whole tank. It looks really, really awesome. And then the flow across the bottom is working mm. out awesome. Like I put food in there, you can see it kind of dwelling around the bottom, then it flushes out hour later. Like it can't hide anywhere and it's just gone. I go look in the filter area and it's all over the fleece and it's just getting removed from the tank. So really, really works well. The uh, flow on the bottom as well as putting on the back, specifically on a peninsula. Uh, so in that nature, uh, if you want to, you can go see the discussion of flow that we had and how we installed it on my own tank in my own house right here. But if you're interested in actually just exploring the whole Ecotech uh, Vortech universe, you can do it right here.